In this video, we have yet another question to analyze. Please come along, let us look at the question and then see how we approach this problem. A resistance of 8 ohms is in parallel with a resistance of 6 ohms and the combination is connected in series with a third resistance of 6 ohms. The circuit is connected to a battery having an electromotive force that is EMF of 25 volts and internal resistance of 3 ohms. The question then requires that we calculate the total circuit resistance, the A part of the question, B part, the terminal voltage of the battery, C part, the power in the 8 ohm resistor and conductance of the circuit. How do we handle this problem? It's uh, good or ideal that we sketch what the dairy room looks like so we can have a formal knowledge of it, a realistic view of what this cell is, and then uh, this circuit is rather, so we can be able to solve the things that we're asked to solve. But I'd like to say this that uh, once you really have the idea of what the circuit looks like, you can actually proceed to solve without even sketching it. Yeah, it's possible. Because I can do that, but I have to make you see what this circuit looks like. And that's why I'm going to draw it. Now we are told that we have two resistors. The value of their resistance is 8 ohms and 6 ohms. Two of them are connected in parallel. Now once these two are connected in parallel, the combination was then connected in series with these 6 ohms resistance. Once this was done, the whole connection was again connected to a battery whose EMF is 25 volts. The internal resistance of the battery is 3 ohms. It is interesting to know that the internal resistance of a cell is usually connected in series with that cell. So let us see how this goes. I'm going to start from the cell point, the point of the cell. Is that okay? So let's say that this is the cell. Alright, don't mind me that I've had to draw this thing like this. It's just based on the concept that, okay, I assume that I have different batteries connected. Are you fully right to generate this value 25 volts? I can still simply uh, represent it like this, what we used earlier. You know, there is no um, error in that. So, this is connected, right? The, the, the cell here will be connected to its internal, internal uh, resistance. So this is the internal resistance of the cell, which I'm going to use R to represent monitor R, then I would uh, call it uh, 3 ohms, okay? Then the voltage at the EMF of the cell, EMF, we use E for it, is 25, 25 volts, okay? 25 volts. Now let us see what happens. Take note, this 8 ohm resistance is connected in parallel with this 6 ohms resistance, and this is connected in series with this 6 ohms resistance. When analyzing these external resistances, it is ideal to analyze them, arranging them towards the source. Towards the source. Just like if you are resolving the resistances, you know, to get a total resistance in the cell, in the circuit rather, you resolve towards where the cell is. It therefore means that these parts, I'm going to start it from here, we have 8 and 6 connected in parallel. So I'm going to do this. 8 and 6 connected in parallel. And then uh, we have something like this. We have something like this. Okay. Good. Good. So these two are in parallel. The first one is 8 ohms and the second one is 6 ohms. And then whatever that was obtained from here was now connected in series was now connected in series with another 6 ohms resistance. So we have something like this, another 6 ohms resistance. The right base are 6 ohms. This is the sketch of the diagram. Now, if you look at the first part of the question, we are asked to determine the total circuit resistance. So a part of the question, total circuit resistance, which is going to be R total, if you look at this diagram based on the knowledge we have of, of how to resolve resistance in a, a given series parallel network, this is going to be 8, 8 parallel 6, you know, something like this, parallel 6, and then uh, this result will now be connected 
in series with this 6, so it's going to be plus 6. Then, uh, you know, this will now be in series. You can see, if current is produced, the current will pass through this internal resistance straight on, pass through this 6 ohms external resistance as well to straight on in series. So it's going to be plus 3, because this 3 is going to be in series. Alright, this is the, the, the analysis of the total resistance. And uh, of course, we can now obtain our total resistance, that is the circuit resistance to be equal to 8 parallel 6, the same as 8 times 6, divided by 8 plus 6, and that will be added to 6. Whatever we get from here, add it to 6. And then uh, we would also add it to these 3, because they are in series. 8 times 6 is going to give us uh, 48, and then 48 divided by 14, so we would get uh, a value of it. So R total. Uh, let me reach out for calculator so we can be fast in doing that. However, we can still choose to work out this 48 divided by, by 14 to see what it's going to give to us. Alright, so um, we're going to get 48 divided by 14. And then this gives um, 3.42857. That will be added to this 6 because it's in series plus 6, then plus 3. Alright, so this is what it gave 12.42857. 43 approximately into decimals ohms. This is the total resistance of the circuit, also known as the circuit resistance. I'll be going for a short break. When I'm back, we'll look at the second part of the question, the big part. Maybe I'll determine the, to the terminal voltage. Now, you have to remember that the terminal voltage of uh, a given circuit is obtained from the EMF and the lost voltage. Where the EMF E is equal to lost voltage plus terminal voltage, it therefore means that terminal voltage is going to be EMF minus the lost voltage. And of course, the lost voltage is obtained from this internal resistance and the total current. We're going to do that when I'm back from the short break. You are welcome from the short break. Before the break, we already obtained the total resistance, that's the second resistance of our. This cell we got 12.43 ohms. Now we are moving on to the the big part of the question. B part of the question we asked to find the terminal the terminal voltage. We don't know. I'm going to use V sub T as terminal voltage. Then let's uh, uh, try to recall the concept of terminal voltage. Terminal. All right. That's the the potential difference of the external resistance. What do we mean by that? If a cell has an EMF, it is important for us to know that the EMF of the cell is not completely delivered to the external uh, circuit. Are you following right? The internal resistance of the cell will reduce the value of the electromotive force of the cell before it will start feeding the external circuit. You can think about this if you have a battery, uh, usually uh, a bullet battery, you have the EMF to be 1.5. But if you measure that EMF, you will discover that your voltmeter won't read that 1.5 exactly. Usually it will be reading something like 1.49, 1.48 or thereabouts. So what is responsible for the loss in the value of the actual EMF written on the battery? It's the internal resistance of the cell. The chemicals of the cell which continues to react. Are you following right? Reduces the, the efficiency of that cell. Instead of rating 100%, which is that 1.5 volts, it will have a value less than that. So the terminal potential difference we have to find the terminal voltage, if I mark off this point like this, okay, so we'll have a V terminal, V terminal, the voltage from here onward or forward, is that okay? Because this 25 volt from here will definitely be reduced. Once current is delivered by the cell, this internal resistance will reduce the value of the EMF. There will be a potential drop. So the voltage reaching the external resistance, the external resistance is here will be less than the total electromotive force. And the reason I've said already is due to the internal resistance of the cell. Okay, now we're going to record a formula. The EMF of a cell, recall, 
EMF of a cell is equal to lost voltage plus terminal voltage or terminal potential difference. And then we have the formula that E is equal to, now this lost voltage, okay, let's make V terminal subject of the formula. V terminal will now be E minus the lost voltage, which is the same as the electromotive force minus, minus current, total current, this minus, I keep putting equal to, <laughs> minus total current times the internal resistance of the cell. That's how we get the lost voltage. So you see clearly the terminal potential difference or terminal voltage is equal to the EMF minus total current times the internal resistance. I guess at this point, we have a problem, right? We need to get the total current of the circuit. If I let me write I total, we need to get the value of the total current. Then permit me to go to my diagram and then I'll put I total here, okay? Put the value there. Good. So we need to find out the value of that I total. I'm going to say that, but I total, following Ohm's law, is total uh, voltage, which is the total um, voltage is 25 there. We're going to divide it. We're going to divide it by the total resistance. And what's the value of the total resistance? We obtain it to be 12.43, which would give us uh, 25 divided by 12.43. 12.43 right so this gave 2.01 ampere okay 2.01 ampere this is the total current offered or delivered by this uh, cell now the terminal potential difference of voltage would now become the electromotive force which is 25 minus I total times internal resistance 2.01 let me close in brackets times internal resistance which is 3. If you do that, the terminal potential difference is going to give us 25 minus, right, open bracket 2.01 times 3. Right, so uh, this gave 18.97 volts. Wow. Just imagine, out of the 25 volts electromotive force of the cell, the voltage delivered to the external circuit, the external resistances, is just 18.97 volts. Just imagine what was lost. If you do 25 minus 18.97, you see that uh, 6.03 volt was lost due to the internal resistance of the cell. Let's go for a short break. When we are back, we're going to obtain the power in the 8 ohms resistor and uh, the conductance of the circuit. Of course, to get the power, we need to rely on either CDR or VDR, which we're going to do when we're back from the short break. It is now time we want to determine the power in the 8 ohms resistor and then the conductance of the circuit. How do we determine the power in the 8 ohms resistance? We can either go through the current formula or we go through the word voltage formula for power. See part of the question. P8, we don't know. Now recall that power, power, if we say okay, P8 can be written as I squared 8 times R8. Or you can say that power in the 8 ohms resistance is V squared 8 all over R8. Either of these formula solve this problem of power. Now, I have decided to use VDR, voltage divider rule, to obtain the voltage here. All I need to do is get the voltage in this 8 ohms resistance or resistor. Okay, so I'm going to calculate V8 here. Is that okay? I need to get V8. Once I get this V8, I'll substitute here and get my power. And recall to get voltage in this voltage divider rule. I can also choose to get current using CDR, current divider rule, and then use this formula to get P8. So the choice is mine. Since in question number one, I've already solved the problem using CDR. Please permit for, 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 for me to use uh, the VDR to solve this problem. So I'm going through the voltage direction of formula. Now how do we get V8? So I'm going to write that but V8 is equal to V6. Please, the V6 I'm talking about is this. 
Are you following right? Not this one. I will indicate the reason because because V8 and V6 are parallel. Are parallel. That's the reason. Does that make sense? So if I'm able to get the voltage here, that voltage is the same both for the 6 ohms resistance and what? The 8 ohms resistance. Is that okay? Yeah, the same. And how do I go about that? I'll use VDR to do so. Using VDR. Using VDR. That's the voltage divider rule. Using VDR, what do we know about that? The VDR formula is giving us Vx equal to Rx divided by Rx plus Ry going to multiply by V source, which in this case our V source is the terminal voltage, not this 25. The reason why V source is this terminal voltage is because it is the terminal voltage that is reaching these external resistances, not this 25 volts, not the EMF. Remember that the EMF value has been reduced by this internal resistance already. So it is the value of that 18.97 volt, the terminal volt, voltage that we need here to get the value of V8. That is what shared between these 6 ohms resistance and this other resistors. And to do that, we need to resolve these two resistors to get one of them because you know that voltage divides when you are dealing with what series resistors. We need to ensure that we resolve these 6 ohms and 8 ohms to get it in series with these 6 ohms. Now, uh, you're going to permit me to do something here. Let me call this, these two uh, resistors. Let me uh, replace it with RA. RA. Does that make sense? Which means now that this voltage, V terminal, shares between this 6 ohms resistance and this R watt A. Where R A is the parallel resolution of this 6 ohms resistor and this 8 ohms resistor. So I'm going to write this formula now. It implies that V8 will be equal to R8. But in this case, you cannot use R8 directly. I've stated the reason. This and this must be resolved. To give a series resistor which will be connected to these 6 ohms because voltage divides for series connected resistors. So this is going to be RA all over RA plus R6. This one, R6. Uh, let me even write, let me, let me replace this with RB so that I can use uh, the symbols for it. Let us substitute in our put your value RB. Then whatever we get here will multiply by the terminal voltage. So this is the analysis. Now, how do we get RA? RA is but RA is equal to R6 parallel R8. This part, right? So that's going to be 6 times 8 divided by 6 plus 8. And the value of RA is going to give us 48 divided by 14. Let's find out 48 divided by 14. So this gave 3.43 approximately. 3.43 ohms. It implies that I'm going to use blue marker for this calculation here now. It implies that V8, I'm substituting into this now, will be equal to RA. And the value of RA is 3.43 divided by RA 3.43. We're going to add it to RB. And RB is this 6. Then multiply this whole term by V terminal. The terminal potential difference of voltage we got was 18.97. You recall from B part. So let us solve this and see what we are going to get. 3.43 divided by uh, the sum of 3.43 added to 6. All right, so I um, want to be sure that I'm not pressing anything wrong. Now I'm going to multiply this by 18.97, which we obtain as terminal voltage. Good, so this gives 
6.9 volts. 6.9 volts. Good. Having obtained 6.9 volts as our V8, take note that 6.9 volts is still the same voltage that this 6 ohms would have. Are you following? Because this 6 ohms and this 8 ohms are in what? Parallel. So they have the same voltages. Therefore, my power will now be equal to V8 squared. Look at the formula, which is 6.9. 6.9 squared divided by um, R8, which is 8 ohms resistance. And the power will give us 6.9 to the power of 2. All right, so we're going to divide it by 8. Divided by 8. So this gave 5 points. 95 watts as the answer of the power in the 8 ohms resistor. Finally, we'll be going for the conductance of the circuit. And of course, because there's no space, so let me take a short break. When I'm back, we obtain conductance, which is simply one all over the total resistance that we've obtained initially. And now we wish to round off the solution to this problem. We are left with the conductance of the circuit. All right? So still C parts. Let me take this as CII. We are looking for the conductance, conductance of the circuit. Conductance, conductance, we use capital G to represent it, all right? Of the circuit. Conductance of the circuit. Now, how do we determine conductance G? It's simply the reciprocal of resistance because it's a measure of the flow of uh, current. You know, how is or uh, is a current can flow through a conductor? So the G is not going to be equal to 1 all over R total. Remember, it is conductance in the circuit, so this is going to be G total, not conductance in a particular resistor. A resistor. If it is the conductance in a particular resistor, it's going to be one all over that resistor. Are you following, right? So, um, since it is conductance in the circuit, so this is going to give us one all over. R total, we obtain 12.43 for it. You remember, right? That was the first part of the question. So, the conductance of the circuit will now be 1 divided by 12.43. 1 divided by 12.43 gave 0 0.08 approximately. The unit of conductance is Surimens, right? So I'm going to write it Surimens. Or the old unit is Mu. Mu, that is uh, um, ohms written in reverse order. Is that okay? I know ohms, we use omega for it. So uh, if you're talking about Mu, it will be written in reverse form. So that's going to be mo, and this is how it's given, right? Mo in reversed form. So this is the conductance of the circuit, and of course, this uh, is the final solution to the problem we have there on the board. Take note, like I stated, you could still use CDR, current divider rule, to get the current through this 8 ohms resistance, and then you use I square R to get the power. Is that okay? To get the power. But I use VDR to obtain the result of power. It can do the other way around by determining the current in this 8 ohms resistance. How would you do that? You know the total current already. That total current that is produced by this uh, uh, cell, all right? This uh, EMF. Now that total current will move straight on, you know, in series through this, through this. Once it gets to this point, it will share between these six ohms resistor and this eight ohms resistor. So you use CDR for it, which of course you know to calculate the current that will flow through this eight ohms resistance is simply going to be I8 equal to R6. Because the current is sharing, the total current is sharing between this and this one. The total current produced from here will go pass through this internal resistance in series through this. R B, which are is 6 ohms resistance in series, get to this point, the principal node, it will share. Then I can calculate I8. Since the share between this and this, I8 will now simply be equal to R6 divided by R6. Okay, I8 will now be equal to R6 divided by R6 plus R8 
multiply by the total current that shared. Get your I8, then use I8 square times R8 to get your power.